then hello. Um, we've got uh, we've got Sonia Leon on stage. Say hello. Oh. Is it working? Ah, oh, there we go. Hello. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. So I'm just going to hand you guys over to Sonia, and she's going to do a little how-to with um, with manga, right? Yep, manga, anime, whatever you can call it, it's good. <laughs> Fantastic. We've okay. got some paper down here. There's always got some paper and pencil yeah. down here. Yeah. Don't forget, if you do want to draw along with me, there's paper and pencils right at the front. Grab some if you like, have a little go. You know, and I don't mind if you've not never drawn before, or if you're an expert, that's fine. You can rip me to shreds. It's fine. I don't care. I've heard it all before. Um, shall I just... Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Okay. Have a lovely time. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Samir Leon, and I've been working as a professional manga artist and comic artist since about 2004. Um, but I also do a lot of work for other publishers as well. For example, I've done a lot of stuff for Doctor Who too, so you know, there you go. Um, but that's how it is, you have to make money in this country, so <laughs> I work for where the money takes me. However, manga and anime is of course my, my one true love. It's, it's kind of like a style that I feel very comfortable drawing in. Um, but I will say that there isn't just one look to manga. There's actually many different types of manga and anime out there. Some are very wispy, some are very strong, some are very sort of horrific and gory, and some are super, super cute. You know, so what I'm going to prioritize uh, the style that I'm going to be demonstrating with today is the most popular sort of like shonen anime sort of action stuff that you would see um, on TV and stuff these days. Okay, so I'll be working more towards that sort of style because that's what's particularly popular and what people understand when they hear the word anime or manga. All right. So uh, when I teach uh, sort of like manga or anime, sort of character drawing. I am actually teaching you the maths underneath humans because to be a manga artist is deceptively difficult. Um, we all learn, well, good manga artists need to learn to draw for real first, okay? And then we diminish, we sort of like, we, we sort of like um, pull back from the number of lines we use. So we, we, uh, we do a sort of minimal subversion of real life. And so we pick and choose our lines very carefully. Some bits we leave out, some bits we draw. Okay, and that's the key difference really. Um, and also I'm going to be focusing a lot more on faces because whether I'm asked to draw in a manga style or whether I'm asked to draw in a more realistic style or a more superhero sort of style, from the neck down it's very similar, but the faces are where there's a lot of difference in what makes something really look manga or not. Okay? So I'm going to start with the front view, then I'll do a quick demonstration of a side and a three-quarter, um, just so you can really see how it kind of like works in 3D. So um, anything I do in a sort of light color, like a green, is considered a guideline, okay? So anything I do in a, in a green is like a guideline, so if you're drawing with me, press lightly. When I switch to a black, it's as if I'm inking on top, so then you can press a bit harder, you know, these are like your proper final lines, okay? So when I draw a front view, I look at someone's face first of all, I divide it up into different shapes. I think about the round, ball, sort of spherical bit of the skull, and then I think about the chin and the draw hanging off the bottom part of it. Okay, so that's how I divide up my shapes first of all. I start off with a circle, yeah, and then I, um, I will cut it in half horizontally. And this is kind of like roughly where the brow bone finishes, sort of like where your eyebrows are, okay? And then I cut it in half vertically, and I make this longer or shorter to match the character I'm drawing and the style I'm drawing in, all right? And then the chin sort of hangs off the bottom here, and so I sort of shape everything around to meet it kind of at the bottom there. And so this is my basic template for when I'm starting to draw a face, okay? Now, a few guidelines to sort of put in so you know where to place the facial features. If you look at people's faces around you, you'll see from your eyebrows down to your chin. If you divide that distance in half, the tip of the nose is halfway. So halfway between roughly where the eyebrows are and the chin is, find the halfway point, put a little marker there, and that's roughly where the tip of the nose goes, okay? Then from the tip of the nose down to the chin, divide that in half, and that's where the mouth goes. So from here to here, put a little marker there, that's where the mouth roughly goes, okay? Um, eyes. Now, eyes come underneath the brow bone, and also they're about halfway down um, the full height of the face. This is all real life, okay? All I'm teaching you here is real life, okay? So this applies no matter what style you draw in, and then you tweak it to sort of like modify to whatever style you actually want to do. Um, so eyes come underneath here. Now, to get, this, to get manga eyes right, you need to focus on three key things. The sort of top line, of the top eyelashes, the bottom line, 
and then some sort of circle or oval inside. Then you fill it up with sparkles or whatever. You can make the top bit more fancier, whatever. But those are the, the key things you focus on. Some bits you leave out, for example, the tear ducts and stuff like that. I only draw that if I'm drawing in a very really sort of realistic style. Um, but you typically leave those out for more sort of shonen styles and stuff like that. Okay, so the main thing really is getting the actual width of them right. You see here, first of all, I'm just starting off with the top eyelash lines, okay? Notice how they are centered in each half of the face and they are also wide enough so that they are about one eye's width apart from each other, okay? I'm not saying you have to do this, but if you want to get your stuff looking right from the beginning, if you're not used to it, you may find these sort of ratios to work best, okay? You can get away with a few others so you can make them further apart or close together, but you have to be pretty good to tie it together nicely that way. But this is a nice, general, good sort of set of guidelines for you to start off with in terms of how wide the eyes are. Okay, then you choose how, how big you want your eyes to go. Let's go for like big, let's go for big sparkly eyes, really big ones, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the bottom line being all the way down there. All right, and then I'm gonna fit some big circles inside to sort of like, to just fit in there. There we go, so now I've got, I've got like two big, big eyes, all right? Now I'm going to switch to the black uh, so that I can show you what I would do to sort of ink around the edges of the eye to really make it look like it's a left eye and a right eye, okay? So, sorry, just gonna, should I tilt it over this way a little bit? That helps, I think that helps the camera a little bit because I think, uh, yeah, there we go. So. You'll see what I've done is I've just hinted a little bit at where that sort of goes down towards the nose. Then I make this top line kind of nice and thick because our top eyelashes are longer and thicker than our bottom eyelashes. Then I sharpen up that outer corner like this. And then I shape the bottom line so that it all looks like it could join up. So just gonna shape it up nicely like that. There we go. So you can see here that really looks like it belongs on this side of the face now, okay? There are, of course, exceptions and variations on this, but most sort of tend to follow this, these sort of things. You can also join things up or leave gaps depending on what suits you and what, what style you're doing, etc. All right, and then um, also you can, you can draw little lines here for sort of like where the fold of the eyelid and the eye socket is. Again, that's down to the character, that's down to you. Okay, now the tricky thing is actually reproducing it the other way around, okay? So for the other eye, you've got to go in reverse, you've got to do a mirror version of it, okay? So it's not the easiest, um, but you have to, have to get, give it a go. Give it a go and see if you can try and do a mirror version, okay, for the other eye, all right? shift this over a little bit because I realized when I moved the, <laughs> when I moved the uh, flip chart over I sort of started going things a little bit to the left. Also, I've only had one coffee today. I think I need at least three coffees and then, then coffee makes me draw about 30% better. Okay, so bear with me on this. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. Now, so we've got two eyes, we've got the face. Um, now I'm going to add some sparkly bits inside the eye because something about manga and anime is we, we tend to have really nice sparkly eye characters, really big shiny highlights in the eyes. So if we're sketching, we're just gonna leave some bits white, like the white of the paper, because if we don't have any white ink, we can't just throw it in at the end to make eyes sparkly. So we, we, we mark out where the highlights are gonna be from the start. So if we, so for example, choose like the light source to come from there, that means you're gonna aim for some shiny, shiny sparkly highlights here and here. Sometimes you get another sort of reflect down there and there as well. You know, you don't always have to have just one. You can have two, you can have three, you can have a bit more later on, but that's easier to do with white ink, to be honest. You know, when you're sketching like this, just focus on the big highlights you wanna show. And then what you do is you mark out those highlights. Okay, and then, and then you color in everything else except those highlights. So now, I'm gonna do things like the pupils, and I'll color in the irises, I'll shade in the irises as well. 
but then I will always leave the highlight sections white. So you can see what I'm doing first of all. I'm just thickening up that iris, sort of like border. Okay, so I'm not marking up where the pupil's gonna be, the pupil's right in the center of the eye. You can see that I'm starting to add some shading in there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of shading to the irises now. So you wanna aim for a gradient where it fades from dark to light. So darker at the top, lighter down towards the bottom. And there are multiple ways you can render a gradient in pencil or with pen and ink, okay? So because I've got a pen, I'm gonna do some hatching. Hatching is when you gradually draw lines closer and closer and closer together until um, they sort of like look like they're fading in or fading out. So you can see what I've done there. I actually hatch in a, in a, a radial pattern to sort of match how an iris would look like. Um, but you know, there's, there's other ways of doing it as well. You know, please remember, everything I'm showing you, there's always, you know, there's actually different ways of getting the job done. And that's one thing I'm definitely keen to emphasize. It's not just a matter of sort of copy me. It is so, I want you to sort of like, um, you can copy to, to sort of like start with, but try to copy with understanding, <laughs> is what I'd say. Okay, so um, now I'm going to uh, add some eyelashes, you know, they're optional. If you do want to do eyelashes, they've got to sort of like spread out. Um, and every eyelash pops out at a different angle. It shouldn't all be the same, it shouldn't be parallel. So for example, I'm going to, do you see how as I gradually go more and more to the edge, they flick out more sideways? Yeah, do you see how the angle of the eyelashes change? So you don't have to do as many as what I'm doing here, but what I'm doing is I'm just sort of demonstrating, you know, using lots of eyelashes so you can really see how much the angle changes. Even along the bottom, they can change a lot as well. It sort of radiates outward from the center. Okay, now uh, let's add some eyebrows. So yeah, eyebrows come in all shapes and sizes. They can also be at different heights as well. So please don't, you know, neglect that eyebrows can be higher or lower. Um, so just adding in some eyebrows there. Okay. Okay. Now noses from the front. Uh, there's different ways of doing noses from the front, and it's kind of it can be difficult, regardless of what style you draw in. Just darkest shadows that the nose makes, and that's the bits we draw. Okay. So depending on the lighting situation, it could be like a small triangle on the underside of the nose. It could be a triangle above and the lighting is coming from below. Now, this lighting is coming from there, slightly off to one side. So this would cast, this means the nose would cast a triangle shadow off to one side, okay? Because if you, if you were to look at someone's nose in real life, and if the lighting is sort of coming from there, there'll be a little bit more shadow down towards this way and down this way. So that's kind of what we focus on, and that's, that's typically how we do a nose in, in anime and manga. If we want to do it quickly, we draw a line down the middle like that, and then we do a little triangle shadow off to one side like that. We fill that in sometimes, or we put like you know um, like a darker shadow color in there or screen tone in there to sort of fill it up. Um, you know you can, but you can color it in or you can just like fill it in, whatever. It's a little triangle off to one side of the center line. Okay, you can make this bigger or longer to match if your character's got a bigger or longer nose as well. And now when you draw the mouth, the same sort of principle applies. You don't draw the full shape of the lips unless your character's wearing dark lipstick. Okay, you focus on the dark shadows that the mouth actually makes. So first off, you know, when somebody smiles, the edges of the mouth are, have, have this like pooling of shadows. So that's kind of like what you sort of start with first of all. You make sure that the edges of the mouth are emphasized. And then you kind of like join them up. You thin them out a little bit in the middle. Okay, and then you know that's because that black line for the mouth opening is really you know what people will always see. And then also, if you look at people's faces, you'll see underneath the lower lip there's a shadow just here as well. So that's another sort of like little line that we tend to draw down underneath there. It's important though to make sure that the mouth is the darkest thing, not that. Otherwise, it's going to look like a tiny mouth with a mustache on top. Okay, so make sure that you weight the lines correctly. Okay, now um, I'm just going to uh, just finish up the sides of the face a little bit. But for, for beginners, I would say, just mostly follow this template. You can't go wrong with just following a template uh, like this because it's it's generally, you know, an inoffensive kind of like, it's a gradual slope down with a little bit of a gentle curve, and then that way it's fine. But, you know, if you do want to draw characters with a more sort of spiky look, for example, Yu-Gi-Oh! is very, very spiky sort of style, then yeah, go ahead and sharpen up those corners if you want to, okay? So, um, right, I've just followed the basic sort of like size of everything here. Now ears, when I was young, I used to give my characters really big fluffy hair to cover up their ears because I was scared of drawing ears. 
But the tops of your ears, they line up pretty much with your eyebrows. You can see that there. Okay? That's the tops of your ears. And the bottoms of your ears, they kind of line up with your nostrils. Okay? So from around about there. Okay? So your ears fit on there. And you kind of go for a gentle sort of curve. You're not going to see... I don't know, so it depends. Some people's ears stick out more than others, so sometimes you do see a lot of the ear. Other times, though, you see it's, it's like a slightly smaller, like a thinner version. And then when it comes to the ear lobes and stuff, the main thing is, you know, this, this you go full, full hog, okay? So for example, if I go full hog, then we'll do this, okay? It curves into there, it goes into there, there's like a Y shape over there, and then it comes out like that. Okay, but that's not always applicable to the style you're drawing in. If you want to simplify it, I would just go for like a line that kind of follows roughly the outer edge and then a little bump where your ear joins on. So you can simplify it down that way if you want to as well. Now, before we actually get onto the fun bit of the hair, the neck. The neck is actually really important because it tells you lots about the body and the build that your character has. Um, it goes from very thin to very thick, and it should match whether your character's got a very thin or a very big body, okay? So first off, we'll start with the minimum, all right? So the minimum size of a neck should be around about one-third of the width of the head, so about there, that's one-third. That's only if you're drawing babies, okay, because they've got no muscle, that's the reason why they're really floppy, they can't hold their heads up, you know, and, and they're very young. Um, now, as somebody gets older, they build more muscle, they build more mass, okay? So, you know, usually anything that isn't a baby should have a neck a little bit th thicker than this. And then you've got the max, which is pretty much the full width of the head. And we're talking like, you know, hench. We're talking like, you know, pop. Yeah, that, that's, that's really only achievable by a lot of workouts and some steroids, okay? So this is really, it's like, you know, if that's, that's really if you want to go for a really, really big neck. So you have to choose. What suits your character? Is your character skinny? Is your character fat? Make sure their neck matches, okay? Now, the other thing is, once you know how it is in real life, then you tweak it for style. So if you're drawing something as in a spindly Sailor Moon style, look at real life and then make it thinner. If you're drawing somebody in a, like a, a Dragon Ball style, make it like, look at real life and then make it like stockier because they have muscles within muscles within muscles, you know? So, you know, you have to think, you have to know what the rules are before you kind of break them, okay? So this is kind of like a youngish girl. I would go for only a tiny bit thicker than about a third. That's probably enough for that, okay? So something like that's okay for a young girl in a kind of like a more teenage sort of like anime style. Um, now I'm gonna add some hair on top. Hair has to be big enough to sort of cover this sort of like guideline, this sort of like the edge of the head, okay? But so that's the first thing you gotta make sure, make sure you've actually drawn enough hair to cover the head properly. The next thing is, because manga is quite a minimal style, you have to pick and choose your lines. You don't just draw every single strand of hair. You draw the shapes and the clumps of the hair. So draw the hair outline and draw the, the actual clumping of the hair groups, okay? So imagine you are uh, illustrating a coloring book for someone else to color in afterwards. I think that's the best way for me to describe the clumping of the hair you need to achieve, okay? So you have to draw the spikes, you have to draw sort of like, you know, the round sort of like puffy bits, you know, whatever. It's just the outline of the hair rather than every strand. You can have a few odd strands here and there, but you know, you can't do every single thing, otherwise that defeats the purpose of it. Say for example, we've got like a slightly side-swept kind of like fringe leading into a bob. Then I'm going to make sure that my hair looks like it originates from that kind of like uh, point, that origin point. So when you draw your hair, your lines have to match up with the actual flow and direction of the hair as well. Okay? So... Here I'm just going to focus on doing a few little spiky lines, kind of mostly coming from this kind of area. So it looks like a slightly side swept fringe. Okay? The rest of the hair gradually comes out from along here. Alright, so that's what I'm focusing on first of all. And you can see here, I'm varying the clumps. You know, some are thin, some are thick. Yeah? And then uh, when, I, when I go around to this bit here, you have to think what happens in real life. You know, what's, what's, what would actually happen to the hair direction in real life? So if it comes out from there, I'll tuck it in just around about here. You can see, you know, lots of little short strokes. At this point here, it goes more towards the back of the head. So I'm drawing strokes that are going towards the back of the head. Now here, it sort of comes out around about here. So I'm just finishing this off down here. And then the bits at the sides where the ears are, I would actually sort of like tuck hair behind the ears a little bit, 
because that's what I would do with hair in real life as well. You know, so this is just like, this sort of like quickly shows you how you can sort of achieve that look. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up in about seven or so minutes, but I reckon I can, get, I can knock out another couple of drawings in that time. So, I'm not expecting you to draw along with me because I'm gonna go at a super fast pace, okay? I start off with a circle, I cut it in half horizontally so this character is looking this way. The center line actually goes down the side of the circle here rather than down the middle. All right, I join up the back of the head down to the point of the chin. I put in my guidelines for my nose and my mouth. And this is kind of like my basics for doing a side profile. Then it's a matter of fitting everything to sort of match with all the guidelines. The forehead comes here, comes in a little bit for the bridge of the nose, comes out a lot for the nose, tip of the nose lines up with the nose marker, comes back in towards the face, mouth is around about here, it's sort of like a sharp angle down here, then the bumps of where the lips are, the chin around about here, and then I follow the template for most of that. Okay, so this is me drawing a slightly different sort of character as well. You can see I've used more straighter lines, more sharper edges. This isn't really a little girl I'm drawing. I'm drawing somebody who's a little bit older with more of a sharper sort of profile. Okay, this is just to show you not all manga looks the same, all right? So eyes come below the um, eye, the, sort of that brow line, and it should be a kind of triangular shape, okay? So the, eyes, the front of the eye should line up with the edge of the mouth because that's roughly where the, um, the, the cheekbones sort of sits just above, around about there. So eyes should be about here. It should be a kind of compact triangle shape. And also things like the pupils and everything get squished as well so that it looks a little bit thinner because of perspective. Okay? So you can see here what I've done there. Ears are also roughly about two thirds back on the head or the same distance back as that vertical distance there. So that distance there should match that distance there, which is about two thirds back. That's roughly where the, head, the ears are positioned, about there, about there. And then you join up the bottom of the ear to the, the chin. You choose a next size that sort of suits your character. And then you draw some hair on top, okay? And you can see here now I'm doing sort of short spikes, so sort of spiked back. So you can quickly see how it is. And if somebody's got like hair swept up, then you've got to feather it onto the hairline there. It's about there. So you can see, you know, I started off using the same sort of shapes as before. I just sort of like, you know, twisted it around to the side. Three minutes, right? I can do this. Oh, okay. So that's a side view. So three quarters. Say for example, somebody's looking halfway between, like sort of this way, okay? So now I've got like a circle. But also, to add that 3D sort of look to it, I'm going to make it so this character is also going to be looking slightly down as well, so you can see how it works, okay? So, I'm cutting this in half, but it's a curved surface, it tilts down. It's going to curve down. Okay? So this is the front of the face, this is the back of the head, okay? So now, this, if this cuts at a three-quarters sort of like view, this curves down here, but the chin stays sticking out. So, that line should be mostly straight. It shouldn't go all the way back in because our chins don't go back into our necks, okay? The back of the head curves around a lot to meet it at the front. You join that up together. So we've got ourselves this kind of like, see? So you can see straight away, this is somebody looking three quarters or slightly tilted down, all right? You put in your markers for your nose and your mouth, divide in half, divide in half again. The thing you've got to watch out for in these sort of views though is perspective, okay? Because stuff that is on this side of the face is going to be squished, stuff on this side of the face is going to be bigger. Alright, so as soon as I start drawing things like the framework for the eyes, I know that I have to sort of account for squishing things correctly. So everything gets squished. Uh, the frame for the eyes is squished, even inside the eye is squished. You can see here, this is more squished than that one. Yeah, the eyebrows should also be squished an appropriate amount, you can see there. And then the nose sticks out a little bit. Not that much, not as much as the side view. Okay, so you can see there, just I'm just drawing stuff on top. Um, and when shaping the face in a three-quarter view, you do have to be quite subtle. 
If in doubt, follow the guidelines because then you're not going to be too far wrong, okay? But if you do want to do anything outside of the guidelines, you can see even on my piece of paper, I'm only going out like, you know, a few millimeters here and there. So just be subtle because every tiny thing you do has a massive impact on sort of like the, the, the character's face shape, okay? And then your ear, in a three quarter view, should sort of like just about fit within that sort of like general sort of circle area. Choose a next size that suits your character. And then just draw whatever hair you want on top. So. so in this case, I've just drawn some hair sort of coming from the back of the head, from the sort of like the crown area, and leading into something like that, okay? All right, so there we go, okay? So, and I finished with a good amount of time before 11.20, that's good. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little quick demonstration. You know, I was like, I promise you I draw better after maybe two 